That's correct, Katlejo. Now, our Dulux Color Makeover winner has been announced, and the Reach for Dream Foundation's offices will get a brand new look. It's going to be very, very exciting. Now, when going about painting a certain space, some serious thought needs to go into it beforehand because the colors that you choose can have a direct impact on your mood and even your productivity. Very interesting. Now, Titsania Giardini, I hope I said that name correctly. She's a color therapist, and she joins us this morning to chat about this very interesting topic. I hope I said your name correctly. Yes, it's very Italian name, Tiziana. Tiziano uh, Giardino. It's just as colorful as almost, yes, colorful. just as colorful as a Dulux color palette, you know, absolutely, just as all of that. Absolutely. So we are talking about colors. Um, you are a color therapist. Now, besides the obvious of working with colors, what does a color therapist do? Well, basically I studied fine arts and then I went into paint finishes for many years and then I th sort of started and wanting to know why color affects you, how it affects you, why certain people like colors, don't like colors. So we associated ourselves with the International Color Association in mm. England and started this color course. So it's quite involved. It's over a year of many, many studies. So what it is, it's to see how um, color affects, it affects your body. Interesting. And your endocrine system. So you yeah. take it in through your eyes and through your skin. So if a color is uncomfortable, like we were talking earlier, yeah. you were saying you had an experience where yes. you find, found color was uncomfortable. Yeah. And, you know, it's how it reflects and how your skin absorbs it and then the mood it creates. That's very scientific. It very is scientific. Very scientific. <laughs> There's a lot of scientific background, yeah. in fact, in color therapy. Yeah. In fact, the Russians are the most advanced in it, where they've used it also in medicine yeah. and as part of surgery. So it's about light. Light and color go together. So color is the reflection of light, but paint and pigment is the absorption of that light. So the denser your colors, yeah. the more thick they are, the more they make you feel grounded. The more reflective they are, the more light yeah. and spacious. So yes. just like our studio, I mean, Absolutely. we have very nice bright colors. It's That's how we manage to stay Absolutely. so happy so early in, in the, the morning. In the morning, yes, you get a blast. It's like a triple exactly. espresso in exactly. your mind. So, so I understand that colors can literally affect the productivity in an office space. Yes. So what colors, you know, would we be looking at Well, there? I mean, depending, in a working environment, you would say, you know, like yours is a work environment. Yeah. So you have lots of different people, so lots of different colors. Mm. So everyone's got their choice. Of color, but if you go into an office, let's say, for example, that um, for people who work a lot on computers, you've got to take in account the screens. You've got to take in account how that affects the eye. So you almost want to calm the color. So your grays, your more neutral colors, are more appropriate for those kind of environments yeah. and gives them more of a corporate look. But in a say a chain, a food chain store company where you're working mm. and cooking and that, then you would go more for magnetic colors. Mm. You'd go for oranges and reds and terracottas and mm. neutral colors. Like another, there's, you know, famous sort of pizza places, you think of their colors, they use oranges, they use reds, mm. and it's stimulating. That's very, very interesting. It's yeah. like that experience I told you about, you know, I was in Hong Kong traveling and walking in the subway, a lot of people there, but they painted the colors or the walls, the colors are a very off color. Yes. And I found out later that's, that's to get people moving out of the subway and it's amazing how it just affects just looking at the color and experiencing it what it what it does a to you. absolutely it's like saying what do you want the color to do for you so mm. in that case as you say they wanted people to move yeah. quickly if you go to a restaurant which is also a working environment you want to go and eat and relax then you look they create mm. the ambience but if you're in a fast takeaway place they do something that's loud yeah. <laughs> you get in there you get your food you run out yeah. so that's all that's really what about what colour is mm. with working with colour and yeah. living with colour. Very interesting. Now, you you not only work with office spaces, you also work with spaces that got special needs, like um, like your TB clinics, clinics and that kind yes. of thing. So tell me a bit about yes, that side that of your work. Yes, that was an experience I had many years ago, and it really sort of confirmed my beliefs. And <clears throat> it was actually the TB clinic in, um, in Cape Town. Mm. And we did three rooms, and we did a room that was the passing over room, which is quite sad. And the nurses used to have to sit with these children in this room until they passed over. And yeah, it was quite, quite emotional. Mm. And that room we did in these beautiful sort of um, peachy, pastel colors, and we did little white butterflies, you know, quite, I thought at the time, let's just go with what we, we're teaching. Yeah. And when I spoke to the nurses after, they thanked me so much because they often spend hours in mm. there. And, you know, that really confirmed 
mm. the use and the power of mm. colour and how you can get them to relax, the nurses yeah. and the child. Yeah. And also concerned. understand, you know, by, by, by creating these colourful spaces within, within wards like this where, where children are, it also, in a sense, speeds up recovery Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, like we specifically used colours that have got to do with the lungs, mm. so your greens and your, your sort of turquoise blues, which are autoimmune yeah. colours. They awesome. stimulate that. So that also in the wards, we saw the difference in the children as well. Very, very nice. Yes. Now, now, looking at a space, just lastly, um, some of the factors that you take into account when, when looking at a space and say, okay, so what are you going to do with this? So what do you take into account? I take into account, first of all, the lighting and the environment it's in. Are we in the city? Are we in the country? Are we in Johannesburg, which is a much stronger light? Are we in Cape Town? Mm. I take that into account, and then I take into account the people that are living in that environment and what are they doing? Mm. What is that environment for? And those are the factors. So in private homes, you'll only have a family living or, you know, maybe four or five people. Office environment, you take account how many people. And then mm. you work from that. You speak. You see where they want to go. You know, what kind of characters they have. If they're very yeah. <laughs> busy characters or calm. You know, yeah. do they need to be stimulated? Do they need to wow. be calmed down? There's it's a so lot. We could Sonia. be here for hours. <laughs> sure. Sonia, thank you so much for joining. Thank Give you. us some insight. Very, very interesting. Thanks for having so me. So next time you do want to, just, you want to paint your space at home, put some thought into it because those colours might affect you either positively or negatively. Right now, we are very, very privileged to have the Weinberg Junior Girls uh, Musical Ensemble with us this morning, and they're about to make us some great, great sounds. Stay with Expresso and SABC3.